everyone. This is Richard from Modern Health Span. Today I'm going to look at a paper which shows resveratrol helping to prevent hearing loss with age. This was not something that I had associated resveratrol with before, so I thought it'd be interesting to see what they found. First, a disclaimer that in this video, we are sharing a study that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Here's the paper, Efficiency of Resveratrol in the Prevention and Treatment of Age-Related Hearing Loss. Age-Related Hearing Loss, or ARHL, is common in older people and seen as a progressive loss of hearing ability. There is no effective treatment to date. This study was to look at whether resveratrol could help prevent or treat ARHL. The study used mice, which were divided into four groups, early treatment, late treatment, control, and sham control. The experiment lasted 15 months. The early treatment group had resveratrol from three months and the late group from six months. Their hearing was tested every three months using auditory brainstem response test. At the end of the study, they also looked at the expression of some key genes related to inflammation and apoptosis. Very briefly, the auditory brainstem response test is a way of measuring the electrical waves created from the ear when a sound is heard. If the sound is below the threshold of the ear to detect, then no signal is generated. It can therefore be used on animals as well as humans to see if a sound is detectable. In the results, they saw that the hearing of an early treatment group was better than the other groups. The late treatment group also saw some improvement, but it was not significant. All groups saw a shift in the threshold volume level, but that for the early treatment group was much less than for the others. The expression of apoptotic and pro-inflammatory genes were lower, while anti-apoptotic genes were higher for the early group. The results suggest that resveratrol is effective in prevention of ARHL if taken prior to its starting. Let's have a look at the study in more detail. This shows a schematic of the experiment timeline. There were four groups. A control group for which there was no treatment. A sham control. DMSO dimethyl sulfoxide was used to dissolve the resveratrol in the treatment groups. So a sham treatment group was set up that had the DMSO but no resveratrol. An early treatment group which had the resveratrol from the third month and the late treatment group, which had the resveratrol from the sixth month. The ABR test was done every three months. In terms of dosing, transresveratrol was dissolved in DMSO and added to the drinking water with a target of 500 micrograms per kilogram for the mice. Doing the conversion to humans, this would be about 41 micrograms per kilogram or 2.8 milligrams for a 70 kilogram person. This is a very low dose as most of the clinical trials I have looked at have between 100 and 500 milligrams. Even if we don't use the allosteric conversion, which is designed to take into account the faster metabolism of the mice, this would still only be about 35 milligrams for a 70 kilogram person. I have not shown the table, but at the start, all groups had the same level of hearing. This table shows the results for the six month test. Four different frequencies were tested. And then we have the results of the four groups. A lower number is better as it means the animal was able to hear the sound at a certain frequency at a lower volume. The early treatment group did show a significantly better result than the other groups. Whereas the late treatment group did not. Looking at the results in the last test, we can see that the mice, given the treatment at six months, had marginally better response, but that it was not statistically significant. All the p-values are over 0.05. However, for those that started at three months, the result is much better, and the p-value shows that it is statistically significant. This graph shows how much the threshold changed during the experiment from the different groups. We can see that the early group had much less deterioration than the other groups. Studying the mechanism, they looked at the expression of genes related to apoptosis and inflammation. 
they saw an increase in anti-apoptotic genes, such as BCL2 and BCLX, a decrease in apoptotic genes, such as BAX and BAC and Caspase 3 and 9, and a decrease in inflammatory markers, such as INOS, COX-2 and NF-kappa-B. So in summary, resveratrol did attenuate ARHL, and it seemed to require that the treatment started before the hearing loss had happened. The results suggest that antioxidants such as resveratrol could help prevent ARHL, but were not effective at reversing it. This matches earlier studies showing that antioxidants do help prevent ARHL. Oral resveratrol did seem to have an impact on hearing, which is great, though the dose was very low. And as they said, other antioxidants may have the same effect. All in all, I found it very interesting and it is a positive result for resveratrol.